Okay, so if I get it all plowed over nice and quickly, then the old boys who drive past on the road can't see what I'm doing, or more importantly, can't see what I've done wrong. Ooh, it doesn't like this bit. Get up the hill. Come on. There we go. Ah, uh, well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back along to another episode of A Dairyman's Diary. As always, oh, my name is Frank, and today we're going to go into some... Uh, well, some winter barley that's not looking all that great, actually. It looks like it needs a real bit of a kick on there. It's full of weeds in here at the moment, which I really wasn't expecting. We had some weather coming in, a bit of rain the other day, which really kicked it on there. And it's uh, the weeds have shot up. We've got some dockings in here. And it uh, also looks like we've got a few other things, um, which we're going to have to come in with a broadleaf uh, herbicide, I would say, in the next couple of days to get on top of this, uh, which we will do. Uh, for example, this guy here, this one is, I think, is, uh, known locally as a common couch uh, weed, so we need to come in there and get that one out, and then we've got Dockins as well, but uh, we'll be able to get on top of that. Elsewhere, though, the crop's starting to look quite good. Black grass is at a minimum so far, uh, a few little bits here and there, but we can get on top of that nice and easily as well. Uh, it just needs a bit of a feed, and it needs to be ca uh, taken care of, which is what we'll do now. So, uh, we're coming in today to stick a little bit of nitrogen into here. Uh, we're going to be putting down a... a a uh, mix of fertilizer which is 16, 15, 15 plus 6.5 which is nitrogen, potash, potassium with a little bit of sulfur in there as well which would make this really kind of accelerate on for a little bit which is great, exactly what we want to see happen uh, yeah so we'll get into the field then, we get it all set up there we go and then, yeah, once this is in, we'll probably lift to get the sprayer down here tomorrow, I would think, just to get that taken care of and see how it looks. But, uh, well, first thing we'll do is just make sure we can get this get this spreader turned on there. We should be good. Set the revs, and we're off to the races. Perfect stuff. So yeah, it's been, like I said, it's been hit and miss rip weather really, you have the spells of rain then, it comes straight back through with some uh, kick-ass sun as well, so it's good growing weather, unfortunately that means the weeds are going to thrive as well. Uh, however, we'll do what we can with it, we'll, we'll make this work. Uh, it probably doesn't look all that bad, we'll make it, it'll, it'll be okay, we just need to kind of look after it. Uh, elsewhere today, we do need to go and pick up a muck spreader that we've hired, uh, so we can get going with that. Not a lot of muck there, there's only one field to do, but we'll... Aim to get that done, and then I want to keep. Uh, we're kind of trying to keep pushing along with the drilling as well. So uh, busy, busy, but I think that's the way we'd always want to see it. Uh, and yeah, we can try and attempt to get ourselves through this all as quickly as possible. Uh, do let me know down below how you're doing, what you're getting up to, and where you're working, how that's coming along. Uh, I wonder if, like me, you're starting to get into the um, the drilling and the, the crops for next year. Uh, we're, we're certainly trying to do our best. We've got a lot more fields that we're going to put in this time around than we did last time, so uh, that should be something that we do relatively soon as well. Uh, at least I'm so, sure hoping it is, because we desperately want to try and uh, increase our output as far as that is concerned. Okay, looks like we're making a, a strong coverage there. Get to the stage here where we almost need to have uh, row crops on. We're getting a little bit too tall. Uh, it's actually again, possibly uh, just beyond stage uh, uh, tier one of the growth there. So it's it really has flown along. I'm impressed with how much it's grown here. Uh, so we'll probably have to put some row crops back onto the New Holland soon, um, and just so we, we can kind of keep keep on top of everything. Uh, so more jobs, more more jobs. I still haven't quite got all the hay in, there's a little bit left out there which we're going to try and do some point this week, uh, he says, uh, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, we're just kind of all building up some at the moment. With the nice weather, I re really want to get into the fields and get all the land work where we have to do it, uh, which I think makes the most sense. And now we're going to head up here. Uh, and then once that's done, then we can look into some of those other uh, bits and pieces that are floating around. Yeah, other than that, everything is fantastic, actually. The cattle are still outside. They're probably going to be outside now for another, I'd say another month. Um, they're still going along. The grass is actually growing now. We're going to see what it does. 
Uh, see if we can get sufficient kind of growth to uh, to warrant any form of um, cut again. If we can, then that would be pretty neat. But I'm really not kind of anticipating it or anything like that. So, but if it's uh, if it grows sufficiently, then we will of course look into it where we can. Um, this field to my left here right now, that's definitely going to get a cut, probably about in a week's time. Uh, in fact, whatever we have left in here after this uh, field, I'm just going to put it onto there again and see how it looks. Give it uh, all of the chance in the world that it's going to need, and it should be good. Uh, and I think once we get down here, we'll be pretty good as well. We've got a fairly wide spreader on here, so it's, uh, it should be all that we need to do. I think I will do, however. Yeah, I'll be fine there. We'll just knock it off there. We're going to take one more short little pass up. Just on the left of this tree. Okie dokie then. And that's another job done! I do like the productive days where we get through everything. It really does work well. Ooh, I've bought a van! I have bought a new van. I say a new van, it's not a new van, and it's, well, it's not really a van. But I uh, bought a new vehicle that we're going to be using, uh, second hand of course. But we're going to use it to be, we've got some egg deliveries to start thinking about soon. Uh, those girls are really starting to kick out the eggs, so we need to think about how we're going to look after those, and how we're going to transport them and deliver them to wherever they need to go. So we've uh, bought a little vehicle to do that with, because our old truck is a little bit too old and too long in the tooth to do it. Alright then, let's just stick some... Stick some flashing lights on. And away we go. So we're going to take this back up to the yard. Once we get there, we'll, uh, we're actually going to need to jump into another tractor. Go down and pick up the muck spreader, and uh, we'll get that ready in the field there. We can go and get looking to getting that spread, I think. You see, even the hot air balloons come to check out the magnificent 7710 on the drill. So there's been a slight change of plan, ladies and gentlemen. We were going to be spreading muck uh, this afternoon, but uh, when we made a phone call earlier on, we couldn't actually get hold. Uh, we couldn't actually get hold of a spreader uh, until now, so we thought we made the most of it. We were just starting to get some drilling done. I'm in the plow here, and uh, Terry was on the 77 drilling, giving him a bit of a run out uh, on the drill for change. But now we've just got a phone call through, so Terry's actually going to jump off into his uh, T6 to go and pick to go and pick up the spreader. So he's a way to do that. I am just going to put the last of the uh, the barley seed into here that we'll need for now. Uh, we're making a little bit of progress here, just plowing over quite nice actually, uh, chopping up and burying much of the trash that we need to. And yeah, we're going to just do this, I'll pull this back out of the way, and we can, uh, the main aim now is for us to kind of get as much, a little bit of distance ahead of the drill there, because he caught up pretty quickly. So let's pull that back, got a little bit left to run with there, should we need to. And we'll leave that about there, it should be fine, knock the power off. And what's that looking like? Needs a, needs a wash down, I know that much, but uh, yeah, looking good. Cool. So we'll leave that to do its thing. Uh, we're going to jump back into the 68, which pulls this Kevin and Plow with very little fuss, actually. It's brilliant for that. And off we go again. So this is one of the first field, or only fields of oats that we actually had this year to harvest there. Um, and then we're looking to really ramp up, like I said, we've already got one, two fields in the ground already with barley. This is going to be the third barley, then we've got a couple uh, to put in as wheat. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll see how we're doing a few more down on the hillside as well. So we've got a little bit to run at. Should keep us going. Um, but yeah, this is nice and dry actually. This look, gets a little bit stony on the hillside here, but it's... As far as I'm concerned there, it'll make do. Um, and then yeah, we'll really kind of... If we can get all this done this week there, as I mentioned earlier, we're kind of getting ahead on the um, on the hay. Well, the hay is all done. We've got to do one more, uh, one more crop of silage, which might not be too far away. If we can get that done, then we're really looking good, actually. Uh, really, really pleased with how we're making progress. So that is going to be the aim. I'm just going to zip around here, get squared up onto the field edge. There we go, and up the hill. It takes a little bit more grunt to get up here, but it's doing it. 
Uh, yeah, and then so tomorrow, uh, once we get the muck spreader in, we're going to be heading over to the field just on the other side of that uh, Dutch barn, really. Uh, and we'll get that uh, muck spread into there. That could be ploughed over there. We might plough it over. We'll see how it spreads, to be honest. We might be able to work in with the cultivator, uh, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not opposed to either or, really, so we'll see how it comes along, see how it wants to work. And then, yeah, after that, we'll do our oyster. Um, and then we'll, that's kind of everything around the immediate yard drilled, which is good, which is very good news. I could have moved that tractor slightly further forward after I'd finished, but never mind. As you can see, I have gone around there, I've, I've ploughed in very lightly, I must say, but I've ploughed in like a marker around the edge. Uh, that does a couple of things for me, really. Allows me to know where my edge of my headland is. Uh, also allows me just to make sure my plough's set up properly as well. So, uh, we'll likely put that back, replow that over again, just to tidy up the edge of the, the headland once we're, uh, when we're about finished, because it does get trampled on a little bit. And it doesn't hurt just to plough it over again. Let's just do that, get ourselves back. Look at that 77. Beautiful. And away we go. So yeah, uh, we're borrowing or we're l hiring a muck spreader from a place about 10 miles away. So by the time Terry gets over there, picks us up, gets back in the evening traffic, he's... I'll be well over halfway through this field, I should imagine. Make it a little bit easier for me to stay ahead of the game, uh, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. As always, this is going into a feed barley for us. Uh, we are, Our main aim is never really the barley, whilst it does help. Uh, it brings in some additional revenue. Our main aim is that we always need straw for the cattle. Uh, so this is just going to be a feed barley, and it means that if the quality is not all there, it doesn't affect us too much, and they can still accept it. If we try and aim for a malting barley, and the costs associated with the inputs uh, are quite high there, uh, we can then miss out when it comes to if there's a bad harvest or a bad season uh, and the, the quality is not quite there, the proteins aren't high enough, it won't pass the grade and then you miss out. So uh, rather than doing that from our standpoint, if we just aim for a feed barley, we will be able to get that without any problem. Uh, and it's a little bit less stress to worry about there. Uh, that's typically what we do for all of our uh, wheat and barley. We don't grow a great deal of oilseed rape for the reason that we I prefer not to use that straw. If I have to, I will, but I'll prefer to use uh, wheat or barley straw first. Um, and then we try and get that all in as priority number one. Uh, we do use an awful lot of bales of straw, as you can imagine there's a lot of cattle there that need a lot of bedding. Uh, and that's uh, always our main aim. Speaking of which, one of our next goals is to try and get a, uh, acquire some way a um, new bedder. I need a bedding machine at the moment now. We've just been using the telehandler, which is not ideal. It's very slow going. So, we're looking into a few options. Uh, first option that I've seen which may be, a, uh, which is appealing, is something that sits on the front of the loader. Uh, and it is run through the hydraulics on the, uh, on the loader there. Uh, which is interesting to me. I don't know if we can get it to, it's, I know I've seen it for front loader only. I don't know if we'll get it for telehandler. I need to do a bit more looking. Other than that, it will be something we have to get for a tractor. Uh, the problem being, when we get into the winter months, we have to resign the tractor pretty much permanently, in that case, to the feeder or to the bedder. Uh, so we, our fleet goes down to two then, realistically. So, uh, again, that's something that we need to kind of think in. Whereas if it's an attachment that can just go on the front of the loader without much uh, thought or effort, that kind of appeals to me a lot more because it's just so much easier. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll look into that one. We'll see how it goes and see... Uh, see what we can do with that moving forward. Uh, but yeah, we'll let you know how that all looks in the end. And we're going to get down to the bottom here. Whip this around. Awesome. Okay. Nice wide headlands here. My headlands are usually about five four or five passes with the uh, with the plow width um, make sure it kind of allows me just to tidy everything up in the end there make uh, sure I, I bury all my mistakes because I will be the first one I'm not the world's best plower and it's uh, something that we'd like to try and work on and improve where we can but it's never always easy Yeah, yeah. If I get it all ploughed over nice and quickly, then the old boys who drive past on the road can't see what I'm doing, or more importantly, can't see what I've done wrong. So, uh, and they can't critique me if I get the drill straight in behind it. 
Uh, but yeah, I never admit to be the best plower here. Frank is more of a dairy man, as we all know. But uh, we get the job done. It grows up out the ground at the end. I'll leave the uh, the the award-winning plowing for the the big ag boys. Okay then. And we'll just make sure first off that we don't crack my own telehandler. That's always a good start. Perfect stuff. So we're going to keep trundling along. What we may do actually is just do a little bit of extra seeding. Just to keep the uh, keep the machine rumbling through there. Missed a bit there. Got, didn't quite bury all the trash there. Might have to make, hope that the power harrow gets that properly. And this was quite a there's quite a lot of residue on the surface here that's not quite being buried as maybe we'd like it to be. Um, so that's why there's a few little bits where it hasn't quite turned over. You can see that the plow wasn't fully in the ground uh, by that stage. That's why it's missed some there as well. So uh, the plow, the power harrow will catch that. I'm pretty sure. Up and down and off we go again. Ooh, it doesn't like this bit. Get up the hill. Come on. There we go. So what we'll do actually, we'll get to the end of this row, we'll leave the tractor here, we'll do a jump into the drill, do a little bit more drilling. Uh, we'll move that telehander out of the way. Put that around the corner, I think. Had a few thoughts about this hard stand on the other side of the hedge here as well. This does belong to us. We've used it for various different activities and uh, various different storage in the past. Let's move this around there now. So if I swing around here... Up, 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 up. There we go. And stop. So, as we uh, as we have this area here, it's, it's a bit of a storage ground. Really, quite often it had spare extra silage bales in there in years gone by. Uh, it had. Uh, various different trailers dumped in here from time to time, but I'm thinking of I'm, I quite like the idea of acquiring like a greenhouse or something to put into here or another structure that we can actually use. Uh, so I'm looking in to see what options we have there. Nothing has come up yet, but it's uh, something I'm thinking about. Uh, always like to try and get more for less, really, and utilize everything we have on the farm here. I think that's very important of late. Okay, we go. Let's get you fired up there. I may just go jump to this just to see how it's coming in really. Uh, do a little bit, move us along. Uh, so at least I don't know how long Terry's going to be. So at least we kind of get cracking a little bit more. And I quite like just to jump onto the drill now and again. Not an ideal way to go, but it works us through the field, gets everything done. As you can see, it's flying through here really uh, it's not taking the each the ground's not taking a great deal of uh, breaking up there making a nice tidy seed bed at the end of it as you can see uh, and it's really is going to give it the best chance of establishing well um, so that's fantastic really can't ask for any more for that when it comes to drilling and around we go Perfect stuff, and up we go again. So yeah, we'll keep rumbling through, we'll get this done either way there. Today's been quite productive, allowing for a lot of things to grow. Got uh, a lot of fertilizer put down this morning. That's going to be, uh, allow that barley over there to, to grow on very, very well indeed, which I'm very happy about. Uh, elsewhere, we're going to keep just ticking through. And then we'll really get ahead of the curve, really, which will be ideal. After that, uh, tomorrow I think I'm off to go and pick up... Um, well, either tomorrow it's available, but now that we've got this muck spreader, it might not be tomorrow. Um, 
Might have to be a little bit later, but we're going to go and pick up the uh, new pickup truck that's waiting for us, which is very exciting there. Uh, and we got some egg deliveries that we need to start doing. The eggs are coming in thick and fast, so we need to get onto that really, I suppose, and uh, get ourselves all uh, ready to go. So that, tune in for that. That might be quite interesting. We'll bring you another little update of how the chickens are doing as well. So, uh, but yeah, for now we're going to keep just drilling, plowing, drilling, plowing, drilling, plowing all the way through until Terry comes back and we can actually get this done in one big hit. Uh, so with that in mind, I will see you all later. Thank you ever so much for watching. I have been Frank, your humble host. If you have enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button to Simulation for the Nation, who very kindly agrees to host everything, and we will see you in the next one. So until then, do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing as always, but most importantly, happy farming.